and beeswax, brimstone and mire, mother and charity into the fire. Ah, stop it, Delva! You're scaring Timmy! Get used to it, Dim Tim. I'm trying to get rid of that woman Faith and that daughter of hers. God, please protect my daughter Charity and me from whatever is out there. What's going on, Mom? Listen, creep, no more cracks about how big my feet are in front of Miguel. I only said that because of what you said about me and Luis. What were you two up to anyway in those bushes outside the book cafe? I don't buy it for one second. You were looking for some bug. Do you really have to ask, Simone? Jess gets so desperate for a boyfriend of her own that Reese Durkee over there, the biggest dork, started looking pretty hot to her. That is such a lie. I can just see their first date now. Oh, Reese, please kiss me. And Reese says, not now, Jessica. I just found the most exotic bug. <laughs> Laugh all you want, Kay Bennett. If Miguel heard the way you make fun of Reese, you'd never stand a chance with him. It's true, Kay. Miguel doesn't let anyone make jokes about his friend. Okay, okay, I'll cut it out. You know, maybe I ought to go tell Miguel how you really feel about his old pal Reese. I haven't seen you much this summer, Reese. How are things going? Pretty good, Miguel. I've been thinking about that dance coming up, though. Like, who I'm gonna go with. Oh, don't worry about it, buddy. You still got time. Just don't go with the first girl that smiles at you. She could be all wrong. Oh, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. All I'm saying is be careful. I'm pretty close to someone that spent a lot of years dreaming about the wrong person. She's got a lot of regrets about the time she wasted on him. Poor Teresa. You're really done it this time, Teresa. Oh, 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 do something! Are you okay, Mr. Yeah. Crane? I mean, Ethan. All right. I'm covered in fish guts. Well, at least you're not hurt. How did this happen? She happened. She who? That girl. She did this to me. <laughs> don't shoot me, Mrs. Crane. Please don't shoot me. <sighs> I warned you, Julian. I warned you about flaunting your mistresses in my face. But you crossed the line this time with the maid in my house? Oh, never again. I'm sure the gunshot I heard came from up there. Why don't you go to your room and read a book? I can't read with all that noise. Is the howling coming from the woods? No, it's probably just an animal. It's... Oh, maybe it's injured. I better go check. No, Charity, you, you mustn't go out there. You know that girl? It's the girl I told you about, Gwen. The girl who's been stalking you? That's right. Oh. She's the one who dumped paint on me, then milkshakes, then barbecue sauce, and she did this too. It's the same girl. 
It was an accident. I slipped on the floor and then slid right into that release button. You couldn't believe me, Alice. And whether I believe you or not isn't the point, Teresa. Oh, but why does it always have to happen to Ethan? Who hate me more now than he ever did? I don't know what to tell you, honey. My only mistake was I've loved him from afar all these years. I hate to tell you this, but you made a couple other mistakes, too. You really, you really ought to leave. You mean just go? Honey, he's a crane. His family owns this cannery just like they own and control the whole town. For your family's sake, you really ought to go. You. You don't have to fire me, Chuck. I quit. Oh, well, that's a real load off. I just hope we all have jobs when Ivy and Julian Crane hear about us. Don't shoot me, Mrs. Crane. Shoot me. You missed, Ivy. I wouldn't waste good bullets on you, Julian. They were blanks. Oh, stop sniveling, Suzanne, and start packing. I want you out of here in five minutes. Oh, and don't come back. You're fired. One more thing, Suzanne. If you ever repeat what happened here tonight to anyone, I will come after you with real bullets. Such uh, <laughs> theatrics. I mean. Oh, you want theatrics, Julian? You try that again in my home. I warn you. I am capable of murder if you push me. No one move! I should have been ready. I should have been ready. Ready for what? <sighs> that woman and her daughter at the carnival. I had so many more nasty things to do to the pompous hypocrites in this town. You, Grace Bennett's twin sister and her daughter would pick today to discover harmony. What were their names again? The woman's name was Faith. But it's her daughter, Charity. Oof. She's the one we have to fear. possesses a power she doesn't even know she has. And my cards tell me that if she comes back to Harmony, my life's work will become almost impossible. I have to keep her away from here! I just want to see what's making all the noise, Mom. No, come away from that door right now. I mean it, Charity, now! All right. Why are you so freaked out? It's just... I don't think you're right. No, that, that doesn't sound like an animal in trouble. It sounds more like a, a wolf call or a coyote. In this area? I don't think so, Mom. Well, whatever it is, you are not going out there at this hour. What's that? A cross. But why did you hang it on the door? Why not? Charity, it makes me feel better. You know, I believe in God and everything, but don't you think that sometimes you take all this stuff to ward off evil just a little bit too far? I mean, we've got angel figurines and crosses all over the house. I like them, Charity. That's all there is to it. One or two, I could understand, but why so many? Charity. There is no such thing as having too much faith. It's what protects us from all the harm out there. In fact, I would feel much better if you would wear this. Oh, Mom. You were me? Okay. 
But nothing's going to hurt us, Mom. Think about what an amazing time we had at the carnival today in Harmony. Maybe if you think about good things like that, you wouldn't be so nervous about howling. Jessica, no. You can't tell Miguel what I said about Reese being a geek. Gee, I guess I could keep my lips zip, but that would cost you, Kay. No more blackmail. You make it sound so harsh. All I meant was it would be nice to keep your beeper for an extra month. You win, Jessica. It's yours. Nothing is going to stand in the way of my destiny with Miguel. Oh, spare us. One of these days, I'm going to get you back for all this. One day, I'm going to have the upper hand on you. I'm really scared, Kay. And I still think something funny was going on between you and Reese. I don't buy all that garbage about some bug in a tree. Whatever. You know, Reese is a nice guy and all, but can you imagine any girl going out with him? Talk about social suicide. I don't know, Kay. I've got it on very good authority that Reese will soon be going out with someone who thinks very highly of herself. A real cat, she might say. Personally, I think it's a love match. Like anyone would be that desperate. I wonder how Teresa's doing. I mean, she's always thought of the cannery as hell on earth. I know, but it was the only summer job left for her. I mean, at least while she's working and not dreaming about Ethan, there'll finally be some peace in my family. Miguel, could you come over here? I can't get this to work. Sure. Hey, Whitney. Teresa? What are you doing here? You're not gonna believe this. Ethan came to the cannery tonight. There was an accident. I still smell fish guts, don't I? No, I think you got it all off in the shower at the cannery. Oh, just be so thankful that all that stuff got on your slicker and not on your clothes. Oh, I'm thankful, Gwen. And if I seem a tad irritable, it's probably just because of the fish scales and bones embedded in my scalp. Oh, don't tell me you're laughing. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> you're, you're totally laughing. Well, you have to admit, if you saw that scene in a movie, you would laugh, too. <laughs> you know what made me laugh harder? As if in that scene, the guy caught up with the girl who dumped that stuff on him and he wringed her neck. Do you really think it was the girl from the other times? Positive. Well, that's weird. If this girl's really after you, she needs psychological. When I find her, she's gonna need a lot more help than that. What's a police guard doing outside my house? Who fired the shots? Who screamed? I want an answer from one of you now. What the hell are you doing breaking into my house and brandishing a gun at me and my wife? I heard gunshots. You're mistaken. I'm asking you to leave my home. I'm not going anywhere. You know it's against the law to fire a gun at someone, Mr. Crane. No matter who you are, you're still subject to the laws of this state. Mother. Father, what's going on here? Ask him. So, we meet again. <laughs> what's going on here, officer? Well, what's going on is that I'm arresting your parents. But you hate fresh air, Joseph. Oh, shut up, Timmy. I need to think. <sighs> Maybe you should carry Timmy. If anyone sees me walking around, they'll realize I'm alive. It's dark out. Nobody's going to see you. And stop whining. I need to figure out what today's events meant. They weren't supposed to happen. Why are you so afraid of the girl? If she doesn't know she has these special powers? Because her mother knows she has them, and she's been waiting a long time to channel her daughter's powers into doing good. Ooh. Oh, that's bad, Tabitha? It's worse than bad, Timmy. It's vile, and it threatens everything I've ever worked for. We can't let it happen. It would mean disaster for both of us. And how do we stop them? We keep Faith and her sweet little daughter Charity from ever setting foot in harmony again. <sighs> if 
far as I can see. It shouldn't be a problem. There's nothing in this town to draw them back. Mom? Yeah, Charity? It was great today, wasn't it? I'm glad you had fun. Harmony just seems like such a great place to live. Yeah, I enjoyed it too. But I get the feeling you enjoyed it even more. I'm so sorry. It's, it's just a shirt. But it's such a nice shirt. I hope I didn't ruin it. No. Anyway, it was my fault. No, I should have been looking where I was going. Really, don't worry about it. Are you sure? Yeah, no harm done. Let me get you some new sodas. No, it's all right. I'm not thirsty anyway. Uh, I, I better go. Sure. Me too. Maybe I'll see you around. I'm just visiting Harmony for the day. Too bad. You're gonna tell me what that little smile is about? I was just thinking about how nice all the people seemed. Ugh. It would be amazing to meet people my own age. To make friends. This is working fine. Oh, it must be me. Will you show me? Sure. All right, just turn this knob. Like this? It's all blurry now. Slower. Like this. Oh. Got it now? Yeah, I got it. So, Miguel, have you been seeing anyone since you broke up with Jennifer? Nope. Been flying solo these days. Why? I was just wondering. I met a girl at the carnival today. Who? She's not from around here. I never saw her before today, but she's something else. What'd she look like? She's about Kay's height. Long blonde hair. The most amazing eyes I've ever seen. Hi. Oh. I mean, hi. How's your shirt? My shirt? My sh my shirt. It's all dry now. I'm sorry about before. I didn't mind. Well, I better go. Already? I have to catch a bus. Oh, right. You coming back tomorrow? I don't think that I can. Oh, the second day of the carnival is much better than the first. You ought to come back. I'll try. She was so sweet. I think you're wrong, Jessica. Your sister doesn't like me. <sighs> The only reason Kay sounded irritated before is because she got jealous when she found us together. She thought I was making a play for you. No way. I told you. Kay is extremely shy when it comes to boys. But believe me, I know when she's really hot for one. And with you, she's going to steam. <laughs> what am I going to do about Louise? I've lost another job, and the worst part is, it's because of Ethan, again. I wish I knew what to tell you. There's only one thing left to do. I'm going to the Crane Mansion. I'm going to explain everything to Ethan. Maybe I can get my job back before Luis finds out I lost it. This is absurd. One more word out of you, and I'm taking you down to the station along with your parents. I don't believe that. Officer, this. I am sure there is some sort of reasonable explanation as to why this all happened. Well, of course there is. And I'd be happy to give it to the officer. Well, I'm listening. My husband and I were listening to a, a radio program. It was a mystery, and there were gunshots and screams. I'm afraid you misunderstood and thought they were real. Know what I heard, Mrs. Crane? Well, it was very realistically done. I can't blame you for being confused. But, well, you've done your job, and as you can see, we're all fine. So, good night. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mrs. Crane, but as creative as your story is, 
I don't buy it. I assure you, it's true. Save your breath, Mother. I've met this particular representative of Harmony's finest before. You know why he doesn't believe you? Because you're a crane, and he's got some bug up his... And he's got some hang-up about all of us. I heard a series of real gunshots from this room, and a woman's scream. Well, if they were real, officer, where are the bullet holes? Find me someone involved. Find me some evidence of a shooting. Surely if there was a series of gunshots, there would be a victim. I don't see any blood, do you? Look, do us all a favor, including yourself. Leave. I don't take my orders from you. And I'm still taking your parents down to the station for questioning. Uh, officer! Um, the mayor! My word with you. Uh-huh. Yes, Your Honor? No, I did not. Okay, Your Honor. Good night. What did the mayor say, officer? Well, you know exactly what he said, Mr. Crane. If I don't have any hard evidence, then I should drop the investigation. And thanks to a total lack of cooperation from you and your wife, I don't. So I'll leave. Night, officer. Nice move, Dad. Getting Mayor Demarest to call off the cops. Oh, it's just one of the perks of being the biggest contributor to his re-election campaign. Dear Gwen, you must be wondering what sort of family you're getting tangled up with. <laughs> no, not at all. That's a relief. It's obvious this uh, overzealous police officer is just trying to make a name for himself at our expense. You don't know the half of it. You know who he is, don't you? No, I didn't catch his name. Officer Luis Lopez Fitzgerald. He's Pilar's son. Oh, dear. Oh, she told me one of her sons had become a policeman. This is awkward. I don't care who he is. I want his badge. No, absolutely not. It would crush Pilar. I think it's best if we all just forget this incident. After all, having a police officer fired would be very bad publicity, and none of us want that. You're right, Ivy. I still don't understand You know, there's a strong aroma of fish about you, Ethan. What did you do in that cannery inspection? Join in with the workers? Something like that. <laughs> it's late. Gwen and I have to go. Oh, absolutely. Good night, dear. Good night. I'll be downstairs. Good night, Gwen. So, tell me the truth. Did that cop hear gunshots or not? <laughs> Don't really, Ethan. Why on earth would gunfire be coming from my bedroom? Don't keep Gwen waiting. Get... Huh? <laughs> Are you pleased with yourself, Ivy? If I hadn't gotten the mayor to call off that cop, we'd both be spending tonight at the police station getting the third degree. Are you out of your mind, Teresa? The worst thing you can do is go over to Ethan's house. He's probably still in rage after what you did. I don't want him to think I hate him. Besides, he's got to know none of it's on purpose. But why do you care what Ethan thinks? I thought you were over him after you saw him propose to Gwen Hotchkiss. Guess what, Mitney? And they're not engaged after all. Ethan's still free. Oh, good grief. After everything that's happened, you're still fantasizing about Ethan, aren't you? There's something different about this girl. She's not like anyone I've ever met. I've been talking about her a lot, huh? For about five minutes without taking a breath. Yeah, I must sound so lame to you. No, you don't, Miguel. I guess I've been saying so much because you're so easy to talk to. It's like rapping with one of the guys. I don't remember seeing any girl like that at the carnival. Me neither. Well, there's a chance she'll be back tomorrow. Promise me, if you see anyone that could be her, you'll let me know. Of course, Miguel. What are friends for? What is my sister doing here? She's supposed to be working at the cannery. If you're going to scream, do it into my hand so Miguel doesn't hear. There. 
Is that better? Uh, not really. It's not fair, Simone. I am this close to getting Miguel, and suddenly some sweet girl from out of town is all he can talk about. Are you really going to tell Miguel if you see this girl tomorrow at the carnival? Are you kidding, Simone? If I see her first, I'm going to send her for a very long walk off a very short pier. Well, I think all the howling stopped, so I'm going to bed. Good idea, Charity. Sweet dreams. Mm. I think I might just have some. <laughs> About the carnival and harmony? I really want to go back there, Mom. Maybe someday we could even live there. Maybe. You know, you never know how things might work out. Good night, Charity. Night, Mom. its way into the house. <laughs> oh, the image of you, the almighty Julian Crane, being led off in handcuffs. It might have been worth letting Pilar's son arrest us. Well, if all you want, Ivy, you're the one that couldn't take the heat. You love the status of being Mrs. Julian Crane way too much to risk public ridicule, even as a means of getting back at me. Frankly, Julian, I don't give a damn about bad publicity for your sake or mine. It's Ethan I worry about. Oh, yes. Always Ethan, always the number one son. He was away at boarding school while he was growing up. He, he doesn't know what kind of a marriage we have. Now that he's home, I don't want to see him disillusioned or hurt. He's a big boy. I don't want to see him hurt. I want to see him married to Gwen, happy having a good life. Tell me something, Ivy. Why, why are you always so concerned about Ethan and all her other children? That's not true. It's just that Ethan's the oldest. My only concern right now is about you bringing adverse publicity down to this family with your antics tonight. What? What? Now, I'm to blame? It's my fault because you brought the maid to your bed? If you asked me, yes. It's been years since you came to my bed. I mean, what is any red-blooded American male supposed to do? You are disgusting. You didn't used to think so. You know, I still find you magnificent, beautiful, and very, very enticing. Is that so? More so tonight than usual. Hmm. I want you, Ivy. You want me to come to your bed? It's been years. Hmm. I'd rather die. <laughs> I should have known. Another one of your juvenile taunts. You know why I don't come to your bed, Julian. We had a bargain. I kept my part. You have your children, but you'll never have me again. You're a cold woman, Ivy. With no heart, you wouldn't know how to love anyone. What's wrong, Ethan? No, I'm okay. Well, surely you don't believe what that police officer said about gunshots being fired in your father's bedroom. Your mother explained it all. It was all a silly misunderstanding. Yeah, I guess so. You want to get something to eat before I take you home? Oh, that's a great idea. What are you in the mood for? Chinese, Italian? Oh, well, now what, Ethan? I was just wondering where we could go in town that would be safe for my stalker. <laughs> you honestly believe that this girl is a threat to you? What do you think, Gwen? <laughs> Maybe you're right, Ethan. Now I'm starting to get really scared. 
Welcome to my nightmare. Well, there's only one thing to do. That's find her and make sure it never happens again. Oh, Teresa, just when I thought you were finally over Ethan Crane. And Luis, you should have heard him. He was so proud of you. But it wasn't my fault. I never expected to see Ethan at the cannery. And it was an accident. I swear it was. You know, I actually believe you. I mean, as crazy as you are, I know you wouldn't try to meet Ethan by spilling fish guts all over him. But you know what Luis is going to think. God, he hates the crane so much, he's going to kill me. Oh, he loves you, Teresa. He's just concerned. He wants you to get your life on track. Why don't you spend tonight at my house? That way, Luis doesn't have to know what happened yet. He won't expect you home from work until the morning anyway. And that'll give us time to think of some cover story. <sighs> Thank you so much, Whitney. Hey, guys, time to split. I can't believe Miguel liked that girl so much. He barely even talked to her. He doesn't even know her name. What? How do you know? I heard Miguel talking about her before. Poor Kay. Just when she was getting her hopes up. You don't know anything, brat face. Everything's gonna work out just perfect between me and Miguel. Good luck, dear sister. <sighs> look, Timmy. Children look so innocent even when they get to be teenagers and all the dreaming and scheming begins in earnest. But beware of those raging hormones. They drive even the nicest ones to such wild lengths. Like what, Telfer? Never you mind. <laughs> hmm. Trouble is already brewing in that group. Lots of trouble. about that girl you met today. I don't even know her name. Well, don't despair. Maybe she'll show up at the contest tomorrow. I thought you were working tonight, Teresa. I was. I, um, I left early. Oh, well, I'm glad you're here. I was wondering if you could do me a favor. It's about this contest at the carnival tomorrow. I could really use your help. Tomorrow I'm gonna talk to the foreman at the cannery, find out that girl's name. One way or another, this has got to stop. <laughs> What's so funny? I was thinking, Pilar's over-eager cop son seems to love getting involved in Crane family business. Maybe I can use him to find this girl. Those cranes think they own this town. Well, they don't. <laughs> well, how could that police officer help you? Once I track down who this girl is, I'll turn him over to Pilar's son. <laughs> if he's still in the mood to arrest someone, he can go to town with her. Well, don't forget about that contest you entered in the carnival tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Finding that girl's just gonna have to wait till it's over. Tomorrow, Reese, after the contest at the carnival, that's when you and Kay are going to get together. Trust me. I don't know, Kay. I'm not sure I'm even going to the carnival tomorrow. But I really need your help, Teresa. I thought you were working the night shift at the cannery anyway. Well, there's going to be some wicked fine guys in this contest I'm setting up. I'm really not up for meeting anybody right now. I have some pretty lousy luck with men lately. Too bad. Could have really used your help. I heard you talking to Kay. 
You can't stop living your life because of what happened tonight. You're right. Besides, what trouble can I get into at some silly contest? At least it'll keep my mind off Ethan. Stop asking me, Timmy. I am not going to get rid of Fluffy. Tell the, the, the cat is so mean to Timmy. The cat stays, and that's final. Oh. What's that sound? Timmy doesn't hear anything. It, it sounds like scratching. Fluffy, can I help the attic again? No. Save me, Tabitha. It's not the cat. What is it? Well, whatever it is, I feel like celebrating all of a sudden. Timmy will make more Timmy's. Oh, no, no, forget them, our Timmy's. But well, I'll be back in a minute. For a cat who's really antisocial? Yes, this is an emergency! This cat hates Timmy! Talking to someone, Timmy? No, just Timmy. Oh, that must have been a weird conversation. There it is again. What, Tabitha? Scratching sound. Fluffy? Forget Fluffy. Oh, yes. Be careful, Faith. You and that little daughter of yours. It's getting louder. Scratching's coming closer. Stop it, Tabitha. You're scaring Timmy. Faith and her goody goody daughter Charity are the ones who should be scared. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Thought you could hide from old Tabitha, did you? You should know better, Faith. You should have kept your daughter hidden. <laughs> too late, too late. <laughs> too late, Faith. <laughs> Dear Lord, please protect Charity and me from what's trying to get in. I won't let you in. I won't let you destroy her. Oh, make my life if you must. But spare Charity.